What's going on, guys? If you see a painting, common sense will tell you a painter painted it. If you see a building, common sense will tell you a builder built it. It's an assumption, but it's common sense. The building is proof, evidence of the builder. Now, if you see creation, if you see the world around us, isn't it obvious, isn't it common sense that it was created? But if you disagree, the alternative view is all of this came from nothing. The universe came from nothing. Now, people will say, no, scientists do not teach that the universe came from nothing because they know it is scientifically impossible and it's absurd. But I beg to differ, they do. Check this out. Well, first of all, I mean, you say the universe was created without the hand of God and that science can explain why everything exists. So explain that. Well, let me make it clear. I say it's plausible that it was created uh, without God. I, I think that's what's worth celebrating is the fact that we we can see some plausible steps. We don't know all the answers, and I don't claim we know all the answers, but even the fact that the laws of nature themselves could have created everything we see, all 100 billion galaxies, each containing 100 billion stars, from nothing is absolutely remarkable. And the discoveries that have made that possible, that idea possible, are worth celebrating. The point is that we kind of realized after a uh, hundred years of studying the universe that the total energy of the universe could be precisely zero. And if you were going to create a universe from nothing, that's probably a good first step. The laws of quantum mechanics tell us that empty space is a boiling, bubbling brew of virtual particles that pop in and out of existence. Strange things can happen. And in fact, it's possible without any supernatural shenanigans for matter and particles to be created from nothing. It's even possible that space and time themselves popped into existence from nothing. It's allowed by the laws of physics. And that is so remarkable that, that we shouldn't feel it's a, a threat. We should celebrate this new discovered knowledge. Something can come from nothing, and that's what physicists are now, are now telling us. Um, I could give you, you asked me to give you a, a layman's interpretation. It would be a very, very layman's interpretation. Um, when you have um, matter and antimatter and you put them together, um, they cancel each other out and give rise to, to nothing. What Lawrence Krauss is now suggesting is that if you start with nothing, the process can go into reverse and produce matter and antimatter. And I was having this debate and I was terrified, of course. He's the world's number one cosmologist and we're talking about things that involve God, which he didn't do, actually. His talk went like this. Let me tell you about the origin of the universe and inflation and so on. And we had 15 minutes each. And in the last 30 seconds, he said, of course, if you want to add God to that, that's fine. But I prefer not to. That was the total about God. Mm. I talked about God and um, received a lot of hostility, which is rather strange and such a erudite thing. But in the question session, I thought I'd ask him publicly. I said, Alan, you know, there's a question that I've been dying to ask someone of your eminence. Everybody is talking about nothing. And I said, tell us, when you use the word nothing in the context of the origin of the universe, do you mean what most of us mean by nothing? That is the absence of anything. He said, no, we do not. I said, thank you very much. So I know all about nothing. You see, as a result of that, it is massively fascinating that the only way to avoid God is foolishness. You can dispute exactly what, what's meant by, by nothing, but whatever it is, it's very, very simple. And <laughs> why is that funny? <laughs> Well, I think it's a bit funny to be trying to define nothing. <laughs> this, my friends, is what absurdity looks like and sounds like. This is the extent people will go to try to get rid of God, to try to disprove God. They will say that everything came from nothing, and then they will describe nothing as something. But this is what they say. This is what they believe. They will, they will die on this hill before they acknowledge the common sense scenario that God, a supernatural, powerful, personal, intelligent being, created the universe 
we live in. So they will say, well, that's God of the gaps. You don't know how the universe came into being either. So instead of searching for science, you insert God to fill in the gap of information. Well, God of the gaps assumes that Christians don't know. Well, we do know. We absolutely do know how the universe came into existence. It came into existence by God's word. God spoke and things came into existence. How do I know this? Because the Bible is true. There is no lie in the Bible. God cannot lie. We know that the universe is not eternal because there wouldn't be today. There wouldn't be time if the universe was eternal. We know the universe didn't create itself. Time, matter, space, they cannot create themselves. You can't have space with no time. You can't have matter with no space. You can't have time, space. Who's going to create the matter? Where did the matter come from? These must come together. They must be created together. They can't come independent of each other. So how did the universe come into being? The only alternative is to say that it came from nothing. And that makes zero sense. The universe was created by God. But how is this guy saying that something could come from nothing? Um, are you saying that there that there's energy in that nothing in that space? You don't. Well, in fact, what's what's really remarkable is once you put gravity into the mix, you can make you can have positive energy and negative energy and you can start out with zero energy and then create positive energy particles that have positive energy, but their gravitational attraction has negative energy and the sum total can be zero. It sounds like the ultimate free lunch. And it potentially is. The only way to avoid God in that context in that is, foolishness. Is, is foolishness. When you're dealing with the concept of nothing. But there's something I need to say here. Because Christian people often say, well, what do you say? What is your answer as a Christian? And I've come to see this is important. And the way I put it very carefully is this. The universe comes from nothing physical. It does not come from nothing it comes from God who is not physical. And one of the great assertions of Scripture is that God is spirit. And this turns materialism on its head. Materialism says there is material, there is no spirit. Yeah. The biblical view is there's both, but the primary one is spirit. In the beginning was the Word. The Word is material. The Word is God. The Word is spirit. But ultimately, none of this matters if you are not saved. Listen, Jesus Christ died for your sins. God provided a way out of his judgment as Jesus Christ. He paid the penalty for your sins. He bore God's wrath and he satisfied God's righteous requirements. So please place your faith in Jesus Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to bring all of these truths to your mind in time. But place your faith in Jesus Christ. If you enjoyed this video, you want more content like this, do me a favor and subscribe to this channel. Like this video, I'll be back next week with another one. This is Pastor Frederick, this is about a book, peace.